How do you save money at the grocery store? Coupons. Clip those coupons. I look at prices. I compare, um, for example, price per pound. Buy only what you need. If you don't need it, don't buy it because you'll end up throwing it out. Let's face it. Getting the best buys at a grocery store can be a major headache. And with so many different items and brand names to choose from, you need a real strategy to help stretch your food buying dollar. You know, part of that money-saving strategy is to have a definite game plan before you go to the grocery store. Make sure you have a shopping list. That way you'll avoid all the unnecessary random buying that happens for stuff that you really don't need. And also never go shopping when you're hungry. That's when you're likely to do a whole lot of impulse buying, just because you want to have something to munch on. I just go up and down the aisles. I mean, I just, whatever I, f I feel that it's on sale that I need, I'll, I'll buy. Did you know shredded cheese can cost one third more than cheese sold by the chunk? Why not save yourself some money by buying a large chunk and then shred it yourself? And you can juice up your savings by purchasing frozen concentrated fruit juices instead of the stuff that's in cartons. How can I save money on dairy products? Good question. Did you know you could save up to $1.50 a gallon when you buy milk in some of the larger family size bottles instead of some of the smaller ones? Well, it's true. And besides, if you got a few chocolate chip cookies laying around, you can never have too much milk. Another thing to keep in mind is that butter prices can go up as much as 30 cents a pound in December because of all the holiday baking. So stock up on butter earlier in the year and then freeze it. Frozen butter tastes just as fresh. And when you're buying eggs, you should know there's no difference in the nutritional value between brown eggs and white ones. But white eggs cost less per dozen than brown. Now when you're buying meat, the important thing to keep in mind to save money is to think in terms of servings per pound, not really cost per pound. For example, it's usually better to buy boneless cuts of meat instead of the more inexpensive cuts that have bone. With the boneless cut, you'll get four servings per pound of cut up stew meat but only two servings per pound of steak that has bone. What are the best buys on fresh produce? Well, as far as I'm concerned, hey, you gotta have strawberries. And it's best to buy plenty of them on sale at the height of their season. And when they're at their peak, they have a distinct shiny texture to them. Now, if you're into blueberries, look for the kind that have a little powdery texture on the outside. Bagged fresh spinach is always a good buy. And you'll get more for your money since pre-bagged spinach has few stems inside. And when you're buying other bagged vegetables, feel their weight and then choose the heaviest one. You might find as much as a three-quarter pound difference in the weight of a five-pound bag of potatoes or onions. Now remember, it's important to have a strategy when you go shopping. So here's a few more tips to help you avoid some of those consumer traps that many shoppers fall into. First of all, be cautious. Don't assume an item is on sale just because it's stacked at the end of an aisle where sale items are usually placed. If you can, stay away from pre-made convenience foods such as salads at the store deli. They often cost a lot more per pound than if you made it yourself with the raw ingredients. Now coupons are great money savers, but avoid impulse buying something you really don't need just because you have a coupon for it. And finally, consider buying the supermarket brands instead of name brands. Often the supermarket brands are equal in quality to the national ones, but lower in cost. And for most shoppers, low cost is what it's all about. I shop 50. Whoever has the best deals, that's where I go.